since life on earth is fleeting, and many are the sorrows that every man must bear from dawn to morrow. We do whatever we will. We live from day to day in search of pleasure. For he who seeks out ill and clings to fear and grief as to a treasure, regrets it at his leisure. For his mind is deceived by dark illusion and deep confusion as to what mankind is. To flee from what annoys, we chose to live out here in the country, pursuing mirth and joys. Young men and happy names we are. And we greet you all and sundry with song and dance adorning. And we wish you all gladness instead of sadness on this bright spring morning. The name of him who reigns here also draws us to this landscape vernal. The prince whose heart contains all gifts in Jove's bright continents eternal. And for this grace supernal, this blessed state enchanted, you all should feel elation. Congratulations. Offer him who has it granted. God bless you, gracious audience. Since we know that your graciousness depends upon our pleasing you, may your silence <laughs> let our troop commence <laughs> to play for you with some finesse, a recent case that's something new. The stage set we've convoked you to as you shall presently be shown, is that dear Firenze, which you call your own. Tomorrow, Pisa or Roma or some other setting will tickle you till your sides are splitting. This entrance on my right-hand side is the door to the house of a doctor of law, who's learned from the issues what law he could. And that street there, you've no doubt espied, is called Lover's Lane, where, as you know, he who stumbles falls for good. You surely will have understood when you have seen the clock he flaunts, what sort of monk or abbot haunts that church there in the other part, if you don't leave too near the start. Calima Guadagni, a youth arrived from Paris recently, resides there on the left extreme. Of all our rich young bloods, in truth, he bears himself most decently and merits honor and esteem. A circumspect young wife by him was hotly and at length pursued. And how the woman falsely wooed at last was brought to bed. You'll hear, madame, and you'd be too, I hope. Our tales named for the mandrake root. You'll see the reason as we played for you, dear public, I opined. Its author has no great repute, but if you don't laugh while we essay it, he'll treat you to a flask of wine. A wretched swain will weep and whine. <laughs> Adultish men of law will bumble. A venal monk will help him stumble. <laughs> a most ingenious parasite will guide them all for your delight. If this material seems unworthy and far too spare for a serious man, please forgive his uh, frivolous thoughts. He only seeks to soften his sadness and has nowhere else to turn, condemned to exile, all worthwhile occupations barred, but with hope this play will highlight other virtues 
as his life's work is on hold and not allowed to stand. The sole reward he may hope to reap is for all to stand aside and snicker, decrying what they see and hear. And that is why, if we look deep, today the ancient virtues flicker and high endeavors disappear. For who would dare to persevere in undertakings long or short, which nagging censure will abort, and works on which fond hopes are pinned, are cloaked in fog or gone with the wind. But still, if any critic's thought through blame to have him by the hair, I must warn them it would come to naught, for he can slender too, I swear, and he's no mere initiate. In truth, he doesn't hesitate with any man who speaks his tongue. He can sting back when he's stung. Our author doesn't give a fig of lackeys of the biggest wig. But let us let the blackguards carp and go back to the work at hand. It isn't meet for us to harp on critics' words or be unmanned by monsters our vain fears inflate. Calimaco is at his gate with Ciro, his servant boy, in traction. The two of them will start the action. Dear public, adieu, you've heard our plot. Now let our tangled thread unknot. Ciro! Don't go away, Ciro! I need you for a moment. At your service. I imagine you must have wondered why I left Paris so suddenly. Hey, you must be wondering now why I stayed in Firenze for a month already without doing anything. I am indeed. If I haven't told you up to now what I'm about to reveal, it's not because I don't trust you. I always feel it is better not to talk about private matters unless one is forced to. However, since I think I can use your help now. I'm gonna let you in on the secret. I'm your servant. And servants should never ask questions or pry into their master's personal affairs. But if we are told about them, we must serve you faithfully. That's what I have always done and I always will do. I know that. I imagine you must have heard me say a thousand times, so it doesn't matter if you hear it for the thousand and first. <clears throat> How? When I was a lad of ten, my mother and my father died, and my guardian sent me to Paris, where I lived for twenty years. What? With the King Charles campaign in Italia, which stirred up the wars and ruined our country, I decided, after ten years, to stay there and never return home, judging I could live more safely there than here. Very so. And having commissioned someone here to sell off all my belongings, except for the house, I settled down and I lived there for the next ten years, dividing my time between studies, pleasure, and business. I know. And I arranged things so nicely that none of these activities ever interfere with any of the others. In this fashion, as you well know, I live tranquilly, helping my fellow man, being sure never to offend anyone else. So I felt accepted by merchant and nobleman, foreigner and countryman, rich and poor alike. That is quite true. But fortune did me no doubt that things were going too well for me. So to it that a certain Camillo Calfucci came to Paris. I'm beginning to understand what your trouble is. Like many other Fiorentini, he was often a guest in my house and talking together one day, we happened to get into an argument as to whether the women, the, the women are more beautiful in France or in Italia. I couldn't speak about the Italian women since I was so young when I left, but another Fiorentino who was there took the part of the French and Camillo that of the Italians. After a great deal of discussion on both sides, Camillo almost flew into a rage, saying that even if all the Italian women were monsters, one of his relatives was enough by herself to win back their honor. Now I know exactly what your trouble is. He named Madonna Lucrezia, the wife of Mr. Michel Alpucci. He paid such homage to her grace and her beauty that he silenced all the rest of us and he aroused in me a great desire to, to see her for myself, that without stopping to consider anything else, or there was war or peace in Italia, I set out for Firenze. Upon my arrival, 
I found Madonna Lucrezia's reputation to be... to be nothing to compare to the true which you will admit is rare indeed. I've been inflamed with such burning desire to... to be with her that I cannot bear it. If you had spoken to me back in Paris, I would have known how to advise you. But now, I really don't know what to say. I haven't told you all this to get your advice, but just to find a little relief and get you ready to help me if I should need it. I'm quite ready to do so. But what hopes do you have? I don't have any. <laughs> why? I'll tell you why. In the first place, I have to overcome Madonna Lucrezia's own nature since she's completely virtuous and not interested in affairs of the heart. Second, she has an husband who is very rich, who lets her have her way in all things, and although he's a young, he doesn't appear to be all that old. Third, she doesn't have any relatives or neighbors whom she meets as dances, parties, uh, other kinds of entertainment where young women generally go to have fun. So, no workmen frequent her house. There are maids or servants who are not afraid of her, so there is no chance for bribery. What do you think you can do then? Nothing is ever so desperate that there is no ground for hope. Even if the hope is vain and foolish, a man's will and desire to achieve what he wants will make it seem not to be. Well then, what gives you hope? Two things. First of all, the stupidity of that man. Monsieur Nietzsche, who, although is the daughter of Lars, is the most foolish and the simplest man in all Firenze. Second, the desire of, bo of both of them for children. They have been married for six years now without having any. And since they are rich, they are dying to have an heir. There is a, a third reason to her mother. Sostrata. She used to play around a bit when she was younger, but now she's well to do, so I don't know how to take advantage of that. Have you tried anything at all yet? Yes, but nothing much. What? You know Ligurio, hmm? who is always showing up to eat at my house. He used to make his living as a marriage broker, but then he took up mooching lunches and dinner. Since he's an agreeable fellow, Mr. Nietzsche has grown quite inseparable from him, but Ligurio strings him along. Nietzsche hasn't asked home to dinner yet, but sometimes he lends him some money. I've made friends with Ligurio, and I told him, about my love, and he promised to help me in any way he can. <laughs> Watch how he doesn't trick you. Those mooters can never be trusted. That's true. Though, when you take someone in your confidence, you have to believe he will serve you faithfully. <clears throat> and I promise to give him a goodly sum of money if he succeeds. Because if he doesn't, all he gets out of it is a lunch, a dinner, and I wouldn't eat alone anyway. What has he promised to do so far? He promised to persuade Mr. Nietzsche to take his wife to the bed this coming day. And? Who knows? A place like that could change your mind, since people have nothing to do there but just have fun. I would, I would like to go there and seize every opportunity for pleasure, <laughs> and I wouldn't neglect to show off my wealth. So, that I will... Sounds all right to Yes. Julio went off this morning to send out Mr. Nietzsche on the subject, and he told me that... He told me that he... He, he told me that he, he let me know what he said. Huh, there they are! Together now! Huh. All right. I think I'll move up a little way, so I can speak with Ligurio as soon as he has got rid of Nietzsche. Meanwhile, you! Go on with your business, back at the house! If I need you for anything, I'll call you. I'm off. I am sure that your advice is sound. <clears throat> and I spoke of it with the missus last night. She said she will give me an answer today. But to tell you the truth, I'm not so keen on going. Why not? Because I don't want to leave home very willingly. And besides, to have to pack up the wife, the servant, the whole household stuff, it just doesn't sit right with me. Aside from that, I spoke with a couple of 
doctors yesterday. One says to go to Coretta, the one says San Filippo, the third one says La Villa. They're all a bunch of quacks to me. <coughs> I don't think these doctors know their ass from their elbow. I think what's bothering you is what you were talking about before. You're just not used to getting out of sight of the cupola. <laughs> That's where we were all wrong. When I was young, I was a real vagabond. There wasn't a fair in all Prato that I didn't go to, and there wasn't a castle in all Firenze that I didn't visit. And for telling you more, I have been to Pisa and Livorno. What do you think of that? Well, you must have seen the peaking tower of Pisa. You mean the leaking tower of Pisa. <laughs> oh, yes, the leaking tower of Pisa. Did you see the sea at Livorno? Of course I saw it. How much bigger is it than the Arno? Than the Arno? <laughs> at least four times. More than six times. I'd go as far as to say even seven times. And all you can see is water. 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 I am really amazed, then, that such a man of the world, who has pissed in so many different places, should make such a fuss about going off to the bath. Mm, you're talking dribble, man. And you think it's such a trifle to have to pack the whole household? Still, I am so anxious to have children that I'm ready to do just about anything. You go and talk to these doctors and find out which path they want me to go to. Meanwhile, I'll be with the missus and I'll talk to you later. That's a good idea. I have never seen a more stupid man in the whole world. And look how fortune has favored him. He is rich and has a beautiful, virtuous wife with fine manners fit to rule a kingdom. You know? It is seldom the case, as the old saying goes, that marriages are made in heaven. Often you see a fine, upstanding man paired off with a beast. And on the contrary, an intelligent woman married to a nitwit. But there is something to be gained from Messer Nietzsche's foolishness. Kalimaco has grounds for hope. Oh, there he is now! What are you doing standing there, Kalimako? I saw you with Mr. Nietzsche, and I was waiting for you to get rid of him, to know what you did. You know what kind of man he is. Little sense and less spirit. He is hard to pry away from Firenze, but I have warmed him up to it, and he has told me that he will do whatever I ask. So, if you want to follow that plan, I think that he will go along with us, only I am not sure if we will accomplish what we want that way. Why not? Who can tell? All kinds of people go to those baths. Some fellow might come along who like Madonna Lucrezia as much as you do, someone who is richer or more attractive than you. In that case, there is a risk of your going through all that trouble for someone else. Or it might happen that all the competition would make her harder to get. Or that when her resistance was worn down, she might land in someone else's arms. I realize you are right. But what can I do? What plans can I make? Where can I turn? I absolutely have to try something. Whether it's novel, dangerous, drastic, or vile, it's better to, to die than to live like this. <laughs> if only I could sleep at night, <laughs> if I could eat, if I could speak with people, if I could enjoy anything at all anymore, I would be patient and bide my time. But there is no cure! <laughs> and if my hope is I kept alive by some plan or other, I will surely die! <laughs> so, 
Seeing that I'll die anyway, I think I have to try something, whether it's cruel, brutal, or foul. You mustn't say those, those things. You, you must restrain these impulses. To tell you the truth, I only indulge in thoughts like that in order to restrain them. <laughs> so, we either get this fellow to the bed or work out some other way, just so I can nourish some hope, even a false one, and so I can miss my suffering. You are right, and I am going to do something about it. I believe you. Though, I know that people like you live by tricking others. Still, I don't think you will try to dupe me, because if you did, and I discover it, I would be sure to get even. You would lose not only my hospitality, but all hopes of getting what I promised you for the future. Don't worry, you can trust me. The thing is, even if I didn't have a stake in this, I feel a kind of sh kinship for you, and I want to satisfy your desires almost as much as you do. <laughs> but let's get down to business. Mr. Richa has asked me to find out doctors and see which baths he should go to. Here's what we'll do. We'll tell him you studied medicine and had a practice in Paris. He's going to fall for it, given his stupidity and your learning and your ability to say a few words in Latin. Ooh, what good will that do us? It will let us send him to the baths we choose and follow up on another idea I have just thought of, which will be quicker, sure, and more practical than the baths. What do you mean? Let's just say that if you have the courage and trust me, I will swing this deal for you by this time tomorrow. <laughs> then, even if he had enough brains, which he doesn't, to verify whether you're a doctor or not, either he won't think about it, or he won't have time to spoil our plan, even if he does think about it. You are giving me a new lease of life. Though, that's too much to promise. And I don't know, I can bear such great hope. How will you do it? Uh, uh, you know when the time comes. For now, I had better not tell you, because there is not enough time to act, much less to talk about it. Um, you just go home and wait for me. I'll go get Miss Sernitor. When I bring it to you, just listen to what I say and follow my lead. I'll do it. Though you are filling me with such hope that I'm afraid it will all go up in smoke. No man can, without trying the sweetness of thy power, love, imagine in any rightful fashion high heaven's greatest virtue, love and thine. Nor can he know mixed death and life, while seeing, or how we flee our welfare as from error, and think more of our lover than self. Over and over, our hearts are racked with hope and then with terror. For those strikes fear into the very marrow of gods and mortals with thy bow and arrow. As I told you, I think the good Lord has sent us this doctor for the fulfillment of your desires. He has an enormous practice in Paris. But don't be surprised he hasn't opened an office in Firenze yet. The reasons are, first, that he's very rich. And second, that he is due to go back to Paris at any moment. Oh, wait now, brother, that's an important consideration. I wouldn't want him to get me into deep water and then leave me high and dry. Oh, don't worry about that. Let's just hope that he'll be willing to take your case if he does accept. I know that he's going to see through right to the end. As far as that is concerned, I'll take your word for it. But as far as medical knowledge, I will tell you after I spoke with him whether he is a man of learning. He won't be able to pull the wool over my eyes. I know you only too well. And that is why I'm taking you to meet him. 
and after you have spoken with him, if he doesn't seem to you by his character, his speech, his learning to be someone in whose hands you can put your wife, then I am not the man you think I am. All right, all right, by Jesus, let's go. Where does she live? Oh, right in the square, the door you see in front of you. Oh, that's fine, knock. Here we go. Who is it? Is Kalimako there? Uh, yes, he is. Why don't you say Maestro Kalimako? <laughs> oh, he doesn't care about such trifles. Oh, you never mind him. You do what's right, and if he don't like it, he can screw it. <laughs> <laughs> Who wishes to speak to me? Bonastine, Domine Magister. Et vobis bona, Domine Doctor. What do you think? Fine, by the Holy Gospel. <laughs> well, if you want me to stick around, you had better talk so that I can understand you. Otherwise, we'll be at cross purposes. What can I do for you? I wish I knew. I am looking for two things that every other man would probably run from. I am looking for trouble for myself. And for others, too. I don't have children. And in order to get some, I've come to make a nuisance to you. Never let me say that I refuse my services to you or to any other good as every man of your kind. I haven't exhausted my life all this time studying for any other good reason to serve people like you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And if you ever need my medical talents, doctor, do not hesitate to ask. I'll be delighted to return the favor. But let's get back at uh, Rem Nostrum. Mm. Have you decided which path would be best to get my wife pregnant? I know here Liguria told you everything there is to tell. That's true. But in order to gratify your desire, I have to know the cause of your wife's sterility. There are several possible causes. Nam causa sterilitatis sunt. Out in semine, out in matrice, out in instrumentis seminaris, out in virga, out in causa estrisica. This is the most worthy man I have ever met. Aside from all those valid causes, your wife's sterility might be occasioned by your impotence. <laughs> if that is so, I have no remedy for you. Me? Impotent? <laughs> you make me laugh. I don't know. There exists some more. Rugged and stiff man than myself in all of Firenze. Oh, if that is so, you can rest assured we will find a cure for your problem. Mightn't there be some other remedy other than the bats? I wouldn't want to go through all the trouble and the wife doesn't leave Firenze anxiously. Uh, yes, there is! Oh, excuse me for interrupting, but Dr. Kalimako here is far too modest. <laughs> Didn't you tell me that you could concoct a certain potion that is guaranteed absolutely in pregnancy? Ye yes, I did. But, uh, but I have to be cautious with people I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't want them to take me for a charlatan. Oh, you don't have to worry about me. You've impressed me so much that I there is anything that I would do or believe in your hand. I believe you would need to see a specimen. Yes, of course, we can do without it. Call Ciro and get him home with uh, Mr. Nietzsche here to get one. We will wait in your house for them to bring it back. Ciro, come over here. You, you go with him. Hmm? And if you will, sir, come back here right away and we will find something good for you. What do you mean? If I will, I will be right back. I have more faith in you than Hungarians in their swords. That master of yours is a really worthy man. More than you can imagine. The king of France must have a higher regard for him. 
Exceptional. That must be the reason why he prefers to remain in France. I think so. He's got the right idea. In this town, there's just a bunch of shit asses. Nobody has appreciation for class. If he stuck around here, there wouldn't be a single man who would look him in the eye. I know what I'm talking about because I've worked my ass off just to learn am, am, am. If I didn't have money of my own, I'd be up to the creek, let me tell you. What do you make? A hundred Ducati a year? Not a hundred lire, not even a hundred grossi. Let me tell you that. And the reason is that anybody who doesn't have connection in this town cannot make the time of the day. All we're good for is to go to parties, or weddings, or funeral, or sit on the proconsul's bench just watching the people go by. But I don't give a damn. I don't need anyone. There is a lot worse off than I am, let me tell you that. All this is, of course, strictly confidential. I wouldn't want some fine or pain in the ass slapped on me. Don't worry. Here is my house. You wait here, I'll be right back. Go ahead. If all men of learning were like, like this one, the rest of us would be hanging from the treetops. That rascal Ligurio and that crazy master of mine are leading him into something he's going to be sorry for. To tell you the truth, I kind of like that. <laughs> as long as word doesn't get around. If it does, my life is in jeopardy. And so is my master's. And his property, too. He has already turned into a doctor. I don't know what their plans are or what the swingle is leading to, but here come Mr. Nietzsche with a chamber pot. <laughs> In his head. I have always done everything your way. I want you to do this my way. If I had known that I was not going to have children, I would have married some peasant girl other than you. I'm here, zero. Take this. Come along with me. What a hard time getting this really missus of mine to give me this specimen. It's not that she isn't interested in having children. She's more concerned than I am. But as soon as I ask her to do something, it's a whole different story. Be patient. You have to use sweet talk with women to get your way. What do you mean, sweet talk? She got me mad at little wet hen. You go quickly and tell Kaliguri and Kalimako that I'm back. Here they are, coming out of the house. <laughs> Mr. Nietzsche will be easy to convince. The real problem will be his wife. But we'll find a way around that. Oh, you got that. You got this, Christmas. A zero has it here, covered up. And the topper. <laughs> ha ha. This specimen shows signs of a weakness in the glands. <laughs> it does look a little murky. And yes, you just did it a few moments ago. Don't be surprised. Namulieris urine sunt, semper maioris grossitiei, et albedinis et minoris pulcritudinim quam virom. Uius autem inter cetera causa est amplitudo canalium mixio earumque ex matrice exeunt cum urinis. Porta di San Puccio, this fellow gets more subtle by the minute. Listen how well he speaks about these things. <laughs> I'm afraid that the reason why this woman passes such raw water is that she has been badly covered at night. She has a nice thick comforter, and yet she insists to stay outside, stinging out prayers for hours on end down on her knees. Oh. And she's a real whore so when it comes to standing out in the cold. All right, Messer Nietzsche. Either you have confidence in me or you don't. Either I have sure cure to prescribe or I don't. For my part, I'll give it to you straight. 
if you trust me, you'll get your wife at it. And if within a year she doesn't have her baby in her arms, I'm willing to give you 2,000 zucchini. Oh, go on, go right ahead. I have more faith in you than my father confessor. You must understand this. There is nothing more certain to make a woman conceive than to give her a portion made with mandrake root. That is something I've tested half a dozen times and always come true. If it were not for that, the king of France and countlesses of other princesses of, of that realm would be barren. You don't say. It's exactly as I told you. And it just so happens, by a stroke of good fortune, that I brought with me all the ingredients which go inside this portion, so now you can have it too! Oh, when will she have to drink it? Uh, tonight, uh, right after supper, according to the, uh, to the moon, uh, this is the right time of the month. We couldn't choose any better moment. Oh, there wouldn't be any problem then. You go ahead and mix it right up, and I'll get her to swallow it. There is just one thing you have to know. The first man who has relations with her, after she has taken the potion, will die within a week, and nothing in the world can save him! I don't want your filthy brew! Bloody shit! You were really trying to stick me with it! What a fine mess you've got me here! Steady, 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 steady. There is a remedy. What is that? You just have someone else sleep with her after she has taken the potion, and then he will draw off all the poison of the mandrake, and then you can, you can stay with her without any risk at your leisure. Huh? I don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, well, why not? Because I don't want to be the pimp to my vice whoring! Oh, 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 Mr. Nietzsche, what are you saying? I thought you were more astute than that. Are you really worrying about what the King of France and all those noblemen up there have done? Who can I get to do this crazy nonsense? If I tell him, he won't do it. If I don't tell him, it is a breach of confidence, and that is a matter for conciliary yotto. Uh, ha, ha, ha. <coughs> what are you saying? Uh, who do, do you think would tell? Mm. And if that is, is all is bothering you, leave it to me. Mm, there is still a problem. And the big one. What? Getting the wife to do it. I don't think she'll like that idea at all. <sighs> That's true. But uh, I wouldn't want to take a wife if I couldn't get her to do things my way. I've thought of a remedy. Oh, what is it? Through her confessor. Ah, a will will persuade her confessor and you. Me? Money? Our villainy and theirs? I'm afraid that along with all the rest, she won't do this just for my sake, so. There's a remedy for that, too. Tell me what? Get her mother to take her. Yes, she trusts her. And I know her mother agrees with us. But come on, we're wasting time. Kalimako, you go back home and make sure we can find you at 5 o'clock with a potion all made up. Mr. Richa and I will go uh, to her mother's and we'll talk then with the friar and we'll let you know what we have accomplished. Oh, yeah. Don't leave me all alone. You look a wreck. Where do you want me to go? Here, there, up the street, down that one. Firenze is such a big city. Oh, I think I'll die. <clears throat> that ignorance is bliss is widely known. How blessed the imbecile is with head of bone. He thirsts not after gold, nor aches for power, believes what he is told, hour after hour. He is not dogged by fear which haunts the wise man, of pain or troubles that may arise man. Our lawyer, such a guy, mad for a begetting. He'd think an ass can fly, if told in Latin. <laughs> no other riches count, despite the bother, He'd gladly trade his mount to be a father. I have always heard it said that the wise person chooses the lesser of two evils. 
If you have no other way than this one for having a child, you should grab it. As long as it doesn't weigh on your conscience. That's the way it is. You go get your daughter, and uh, Mr. Richa and I will go talk to her confessor, Fratti Matteo. Um, and then we'll let you know what he has to say. Let's do that. Your way lies down that street, and I'll go get Lucrezia. I'll bring her to talk to the friar one way or another. Perhaps you're wondering, Ligurio, why should we have such a hard time persuading the wife? But if you knew the whole story, you wouldn't be so surprised. I suppose it's because all women are suspicious. That's not it. She was the sweetest, most easygoing creature. But then one day a woman from our neighborhood told her that if she vowed to go see the first mass at Santa Annunciata 40 mornings in a row, she would get pregnant. She took the vow and went there 20 more singers or so. But wouldn't you know that one of those days, one dirty little friar started sniffing around her, and so she refused to go back. It's such a shame that the people who ought to be setting a good example should act that way. Don't you think so? I, I sure as hell do. Since then, she has had rabbit ears. No matter what I ask of her, she thinks up a hundred difficulties. I'm not surprised anymore. What did you do about her vow? She bought a dispensation. Oh, that's good. Now, I'd like you to give me 25 uh, In cases like this, you have to spend a little to get in the friar's good graces right away and make him think there's more where that came from. Well, that's all right with me. I can make it up somewhere else. These friars are shrewd and cunning. They have to be because they know all about our sins as well as their own. Anyone who isn't used to dealing with them could be fooled. I wouldn't want you to butt in and spoil the whole deal. A man like you, who studies in his room all day, knows a lot about books, but doesn't know how to talk about worldly things. This fellow is such an imbecile, I'm afraid he'll ruin everything. What do you want me to do? Let me do the talking, and don't you say a thing. Uh, unless I give you the sign. Oh, I'm pleased. What sign will you give? I'll close one eye. I'll bite my lip. No, wait, let's do it another way. How long has it been since you last spoke with this friar? More than ten years. Oh, that's fine. I'll tell him you've gone deaf. <laughs> and so you won't answer or say anything at all. Unless we speak very loud. I'll do that. In addition, don't be upset if you hear me saying things that sound a bit twisted from what we're really after. Everything will turn out right in the end. Go right ahead. Oh, I see the friar talking with the lady. Let's go and, and wait until he's gotten rid of her. If you would like to confess, I am ready and willing to serve you. Not today, thank you. Someone is expecting me. All I wanted was to get a few things off of my chest on the run. Have you said this uh, masses for Our Lady? Yes, my lady. Take this, Fiorino, then. And you are to say the requiem mass every Monday for two months for the soul of my late husband. Even though he was a terrible man, still, flesh is flesh, and I can tell feeling that whenever I remember him. But do you think he's really purgatory? Absolutely. I just don't know about that. You remember what he used to do to me sometimes. Oh, how I complained to you about it. And I tried to stay away from him as much as I could, but he was so insistent. <laughs> Good Lord. Don't worry. God's mercy is great. If a man doesn't lack the will, he never lacks time to repent. Do you think that the Turks will penetrate into Italy this year? They will, if you don't offer prayers. Heavens, God help us. With those devilish brutes, I am so terrified of that impalement business. Oh, but I see there is a woman in church who has a scale of young or mine. I 
I would to go and speak with her. Good day to you. I wish you good health. Women are the most charitable creatures in the world, and also the most tiresome. If you shoo them off, you avoid the nuisance and the benefit. If you pay attention to them, you get the benefit and the nuisance at the same time. But it has always been said you can't have honey without the bees. What are you doing here, my good gentlemen? Isn't that Mrs. Nietzsche I see? To speak louder. He's grown so deaf he can hardly hear a thing. I bid you welcome, Mr. Nietzsche. Louder! Welcome! Same to you, Padre. What are you doing here? Very fine, thank you. Just direct your talk to me, Father. Otherwise, if you want him to hear, you'll end up with a whole square listening. Now, what can I do for you? Mr. Nietzsche here and another worthy gentleman you'll hear from later have several hundred Ducati to distribute to charity. Bloody shit! Shut the hell up, it won't take that many. <laughs> uh, Father, don't be surprised at whatever he says. He doesn't hear things, but sometimes he imagines he does and talks nonsense. Mm, go on and let him say what he wants. I have part of the money here with me, and they have chosen you to distribute it. Most willingly. But before giving this charity, it would be necessary for you to help us out with a strange case that has arisen with Messer Nietzsche here. It is a matter where the, the, the honor of his entire household is at stake. Whatever can that be? I don't know if you knew Camillo Calfucci, nephew of Messer Nietzsche here. Why, yes, I do. A year ago, he went on a business trip to France, and since his wife died, he left one of his marriageable daughters in the custody of a convent whose name we don't need to mention now. What happened? What happened <laughs> is that either through the nun's inattention or the girl's silliness, she found herself four months pregnant. And so, if we don't take care of this discreetly, the nuns, the girl, Camillo, Mr. Nietzsche, and the whole house of Calpucci will be disgraced. Mr. Nietzsche is so concerned about this scandal that has vowed, if it doesn't leak out, to give 300 Ducati oh, for the love of God. Shut up! And he has vowed to give them through your hands. You alone and the mother superior can take care of this. How? By persuading the mother superior to Give a potion to the girl that will cause an abortion. This is something I will have to think about. What? Something you will have to think about? But look at how many benefits result from your doing it. You uphold the honor of the convent. The girl, Camillo, you restore a daughter to her father. You satisfy Mr. Nietzsche here, and you distribute all the alms you can with these 300 Ducati. On the other hand, you harm a bit of unborn, unconscious flesh which might have disappeared in a thousand ways in any case. I believe that to be good, which does the most good to the most people and makes the most people happy. Amen. In the name of the Lord, let it be as you will. And may everything be done for God and for divine charity. Tell me the name of the convent. Give me the potion and, if you like, the money, too. And then we can begin to do some good. Now you sound like the friar I thought you were. Here is portion of the money. And the name of the convent is... Oh, but wait, I see a woman that is waving at me. Um, I'll be right back. Don't leave Miss Ermita here alone. I need to say a few words to her. How old is this girl? I'm flabbergasted. How old is this girl? Maybe he gets the plague. Why? So he'll get it. I think I'm getting into an awful mess. I'm dealing with a crazy man on one side and a deaf man on the other. One runs away, the other doesn't hear. But unless these coins are counterfeit, I can use them better than they can. But here is Liguria coming back. Keep still, Mr. Nita. Oh, Father! I have important news. What? 
The woman I just spoke with told me that the girl has had a miscarriage. Fine! This money will go to the building fund. What did you say? I said, you ought to be all the more willing, son, to give this to charity. You can have the money if you really want it. But first, there would be something else you would need to do for the benefit of Ms. Ernicha here. What might that be? Something much easier with less scandal involved, more agreeable to us and more useful to you. What is it? I'll tell you all about it in the church, between the two of us. Ms. Ernicha uh. will be delighted to wait outside! And let me have a couple of words with you. We'll be right back! As the meat cleaver set to the sausage. Come on. Uh. Is it day or night? Am I, am I awake or am I asleep? I haven't had a drop all day, and yet I must be drunk. I've gone along with all this horse shit. First, we come to speak with the fire about something. Then he talks about something completely different. And then he tells me to play death like, what's his name? The guy with the sirens. And I really should have plugged my ears so I wouldn't have to listen to all the crazy stuff he said. God knows for what purpose. Here I am. Out of 25 Ducati already. And nobody has talked about my business yet. And now they left me hanging like a donut on a stick. Now here they come back. They better have talked about my business otherwise they'll be in real trouble. Have the women come and see me. I know what I have to do. And uh, if my authority has any weight, we will settle this engagement by tonight. Mr. Nietzsche! Ah. Fratimoto has agreed to do whatever we want. We just have to see to it that the women come and talk to him. You've given me a new lease on life! Ah, will it be a boy? A boy! I'm crying for joy. You two go into the church, and I will wait for the women here. Keep to the side so they don't see you. And as soon as they've gone, I'll tell you what they've said. I really don't know who has tricked whom. That scoundrel Ligurio came to me with that first story just to test me out. So that if I agreed to that, he would have persuaded me more easily to do this. And if I didn't agree to that, he wouldn't have told me about this so as not to reveal their plan unnecessarily. <coughs> and they didn't care about the fake story. It's true that I've been tricked. However, this trick is to my benefit. Ms. Ernicha and Kalimako are both well off, and I stand to gain quite a bit from each of them for different reasons. This business is bound to remain a secret, because that is just as important to them as it is to me. Whatever happens, I won't repent. It is true, of course, that I might still have some trouble, because unfortunately, Madonna Lucrezia is a good and virtuous woman. But I think I can get at her through her goodness. After all, women are all short on brains. Whenever one of them can string a couple of words together, suddenly she is a prophet. It's like a case of the blind, the one-eyed leading the blind. But here she comes now with her mother, who is a real fool. Oh, she'll be very useful in getting her daughter to do what I want. You must believe, my dear, that I prize your honor and your welfare as much as anyone in the world. And I would never, never advise you to do anything that was right. I have already told you, and I'll tell you again, if Fratimotio tells you that there will be no burdens on your conscience, you can do it without any qualms. I have always been afraid that Messer Nietzsche's desire to have children would lead us to do something wrong. And that is why whenever he suggested anything to me, I always felt suspicious and apprehensive. Especially after that experience at Santa Annunziata, you remember. But of all the things we have tried, this one is the most appalling. To have to submit my body to this abomination, to have a man die for my dishonor, I wouldn't have thought if I were the last woman on earth 
and the human race depended on me for survival, that I would have to undergo such a thing. I can't explain all this to you, my dear. Speak to the friar, see what he tells you, and then you'll do what you've been advised by him, by us, by anyone who loves you. I'm breaking out in a sweat. Welcome, ladies. I know what you have come to see me about, because Miss Nietzsche has spoken to me. To tell the truth, I have spent two whole hours poring over my books about this gaze. And after much examination, I find many things going for us, both in general and in particular. Are you serious, Father, or are you joking? <laughs> Madonna Lucrezia, is this a matter to joke about? Don't you know me better than that? No, Father, but this seems to me the strangest business I've ever heard My lady, of. I believe you, but I don't want you to talk that way anymore. There are many things that, when seen from afar, seem awful, strange, unbearable. And then when you get up close to them, they turn out to be ordinary, familiar, bearable. That is why it is often said that their bark is worse than their bite. This is one of those things. The Lord only knows. I would like to return to what I was saying before. As far as conscience is concerned, we must make the following generalization. Where there is a certain good and an uncertain evil, one must never abandon that good for fear of the evil. Here we have a certain good. You will get pregnant. You will provide another soul for the good Lord up there. The uncertain evil is that the man who sleeps with you after the potion may die, but there are always those who don't die. However, since there is some question, it is better for Mr. Nietzsche not to run that risk. As for the act itself, it is an old wife's tale, but it is a sin. For the will is what commits the sin, not the body. The real sin is going against the husband's wishes. And here you are, following his wishes. Or taking pleasure in it. And here you are, filled with this pleasure. Besides that, we must always consider whether the end justifies the means. Your end is to fill a seat in heaven and to make your husband happy. The Bible tells us that the daughters of Lot, thinking themselves the last women on earth, consorted with their father, and because their intentions were pure, they did not commit a sin. What are you telling me to do, father? Listen to him, my dear. Don't you see that a woman without children is a woman without home? If her husband dies, she's left like an animal, abandoned by everybody. I swear to you, my lady, up by this consecrated breast, that there is no more sin obeying your husband on this matter than there is eating meat on a Wednesday. And that is a sin a little holy water can wash away. What are you getting me into, Father? Something you will always have cause to thank God for. And I know you will be more satisfied a year from now than you are at present. She will do as you say. I'll put her into bed this evening myself. What are you afraid of, you silly girl? There are 50 women in this town who thank heaven for this opportunity. All right. I'll do it, but I don't think I will live to see tomorrow morning. Do not worry, my dear. I will pray to the Lord for you. I will say a prayer to the Angelo Raffaello so that he will be by your side. <laughs> but go along now and prepare yourself for this mystery, for it is getting dark already. May our Lord and our Lady help me and keep me from harm. Oh, Ligurio, come on out. How did it go? Fine. They have gone back home ready to do everything. There won't be any problem. Her mother is going to stay with her and will put her to bed herself. Is that the truth? Well, well. You have been cured of your deafness. Another miracle of San Clemente! Oh, we ought to erect a plaque to stir up a little publicity so that I may benefit even further in your good fortune. Let's not lose track of matters. Will the wife make any fuss about what I want her to do? No, I can assure you. Oh, I am the happiest man in the world. I'm sure you are. 
You are going to be given a son. Friar, you go back to your prayers, and if we need anything else from you, we'll come and get you. Miss Ernita, you go home and make sure your wife doesn't change her mind, and I'll go get Kalimiko to send you the potion. Be sure I can find you at six to plan what has to be done at nine. Right. So long. I wish you good health. How gentle is deception when carried to fruition as intended. For it defies perception and soothes the blissful dupes we have befriended. Oh, draft by heaven blended, you show the quickest way to true contentment. And with your magic power, you comfort those whose wealth we would devour. And vanquish by your devious presentment, Stonewall, armed resentment. <coughs> I wish I could find out what I have done. Why does any British rub? He's already an hour late. What torment my mind has been going through all this time. <coughs> It's true that nature and fortune all fall accounts in the balance. You never receive anything good without some evil springing up on the other side. The more my hopes have risen, the greater me, my fears have grown. Wretched me. I will never be able to survive amid so many troubles and are saved by such hopes. And thus, I am a vessel tossed by two conflicting winds. Fearing all the more, the closer it gets support. Mr. Nietzsche, stupidity makes my hopes rise, but then Lucrezia's prudence and virtue make them fall. Habas! I find no respite anywhere. At times, I try to get a grip on myself. I curse my vision, and I say, what are you saying? Have you gone mad? Hmm? No. <laughs> Even if you do possess her, what then? You will realize your error. You will regret the anxieties and the efforts you have gone through. <clears throat> Don't you know how little pleasure men find in the things they desire compared to what they expected? But then, on the other hand, the worst that can happen is to die and go off to hell. How many others have died? And how many excellent men have gone to hell? Why should you be ashamed to go there to face up to your destiny, fully primeval? But then, if you can't, bear it like a man. Don't bend your knee. Don't be cowardly like a woman. <laughs> and so I screw my courage up. But it can't stay up for a long, since I am, since I am buffeted on all sides by by such a desire to be with her that I feel like if I were being turned inside out, my legs tremble, my bowels quake, my heart threatens to fly through my ribs, my my arms grow grow weak, my my, my tongue grows mute. My, my, my eyes grow dim, my, my, my brain begins to, 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 to wheel. <laughs> if all they could speak with Liburio, I would ask someone to let us him too. Where is Liburio? <coughs> it's not here. <sighs> ah, here he is, running toward me. His news will either give me a new lease of life, or kill me all together. <laughs> oh, I have never wanted to find Kalimako so much, and I have never had such a hard time doing it. If I had bad news, I would run into him right away. I went to his house, to the market, to the counter of the Spini, to the Torna Quinci arcade, and I couldn't find him anywhere. These lovers must have quicksilver under their feet. They can't stand still. I don't know what is keeping me from calling. He looks happy. 
Hey, Julio. Hey, Julio! Hey, Marco, where have you been? What news do you have? Good news. Oh, really good? Excellent. <laughs> Is Lucrezia willing? Yes. And the friar did was what needed? He did. Oh, bless friar. I will pray to God for him forever. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> do you think God gives his grace for good as well as evil? The friar will want more than just prayers. What will he want? Money. Ah, uh, we'll, we'll give him a good little sum of money. How much did you promise? 300 Ducati. You did very well. Messia Rita has shelled out 25 of them. What? Oh, don't ask questions. He did it. And what does Lucrezia's mother do? Oh, practically the whole thing. When she understood that Lucrezia could have such a good night of it without any sin, she never left off begging and bullying and reassuring Lucrezia until she has gotten her to see the fright. And then she managed things so that Lucrezia gave in. Oh, God. I don't know what I have done to deserve such a reward. I'm ready to die for joy! What kind of people are these? For joy or for sorrow, one way or another, he wants to die. Do you have the potion ready? Yes, I have it. What are you going to send him? A glass of Hippocrates tea, which is excellent for settling the stomach and stimulating the brain! <laughs> Cure for this. What the hell is wrong? <laughs> Nothing is wrong. Nothing at all. I've just painted myself into a corner. <laughs> Why? Why don't you tell? Take your hands away from your face. <laughs> don't you remember that I told Mr. Nietzsche that you, Ligurio, Zero, I will grab someone to, to put him in, in his. Bad with his wife? Huh? So what? What do you mean, so what? If I'm with you, I can't be the one you grab. And if I'm not, he will see through our trick. That's true, but isn't there some way out? Not that I can see. Oh, yes, there must be. <laughs> no. Let me just think about it again. Oh, I'm in real trouble if you have to, to, to think about it now. I've got it. What? I'll get the friar, who's been willing to help us out up to now, to do a little bit more. What do you mean? We all have to disguise ourselves. I'll have the friar put on a disguise, too. Uh, he'll change his face, his robes, his voice, and I'll tell Mr. Nietzsche that's you. He'll believe it. I like it. What will I do? I picture you wearing a short cape. Oh. And coming up from that corner up there, uh, with a guitar in your hands, oh. and singing a little song. Without a mask? Uh, yes, because uh, if you were wearing a mask, he might get suspicious. <laughs> you recognize me? Oh, no, he won't. Because uh, I want you to twist your face up a little, um, keep your mouth open, uh, pull tight, uh, screwed up, close one eye. Give it a try! Uh, like uh, this? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> like this? That still won't do. <laughs> oh, what about this way? Yes! Yes, I wanted to remember that. Oh, and I have, I have a false nose at home. I want you to stick it on. And then when you come around the corner, we'll be here. We'll uh, grab hold of your guitar. We'll uh, twirl you around and rush you into the house. And uh, the rest uh, you'll have to do it yourself. <laughs> Lead me to it. I think you can be led that far. But it's up to you and not us to make it so that you can go back again. How? Oh. You will have to win her over tonight. And then before you leave her, you must tell her who you are, reveal the trick, uh, tell her how much you love her and how much you have wanted her. Oh, mention too how easy it would be for her to be your friend without any scandal and how much scandal she risks 
if she wants to be your enemy. You're I can't imagine that she won't come to terms with you or that she would really want this night to be the only one. Do you really think so? I'm positive, but let's not waste any more time. It is already too late. Um, I will go and find uh, Miss Nicha mm -hmm. and I uh, will uh, get the friar all disguised up and then you, you you just go home and make Ciro send the potion to Miss Nicha. All right, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Ciro! Yes, sir? Come over here. Here I am. Go! Get that silver goblet that is in my bedroom copper, cover it with the napkin, bring it to me, and make sure you don't spill it on the way. Will do. That fellow has been with me for 10 years now, and he has always served me faithfully. I think I can trust him in this case too. Though, I will reveal him the trick. Yes, figure it out. He's a pretty shrewd character, and I, I can see he's going along as we as we catch you now. Here it is. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Quick now, go to Mr. Nietzsche's house and tell him this is the medicine his wife has to take right after supper. And the earlier she eats, the better. We will be here around the corner waiting, so tell him to be there on time. Quick now. I'm going. Listen here. If he wants you to wait for him, wait, and then return here with him. If he doesn't, uh, come back here to me as soon as you have ended it and given him the message. Do you understand? Yes, sir. You understand? Waiting for Ligurio to return with the friar. And whoever said waiting is the hardest part knew what he was talking about. <laughs> I must be losing 10 pounds an hour just thinking where I am now and where I might be in two hours or worrying whether something may come up that will spoil my plan. <laughs> if that should happen, this will be the last night of my life because I'll throw myself into the Arno or hang myself or jump out of that window up there or plunge a, a, a dagger into my breast right on her doorstep. Well, I'll do something or other rather than go on living like this. <laughs> Is that Ligurio, I see? Yes, it is. And, oh, who is that other fellow who is limping and hunchbacked? Ah, that must be the friar in disguise. These friars, when you know one, you know them all. <laughs> um, who is that other fellow who has joined them? It looks to me like Ciro. Oh, he must have brought the message to Mr. Nietzsche. Yes, it is, it's Ciro. So, I will wait for them here, so we can make our final plan. Who's that with you, Ligurio? The most worthy gentleman. Is he a creep or just pretending? Never mind. Oh, he has a face of a scoundrel. Will you keep still? You're annoying us. Where is Kalimako? Here I am. <gasps> Welcome to you. Kalimako, tell this dunce, Ciro, not to shoot his mouth off so much. Ciro, come over here. Tonight, you are to do everything that Ligurio tells you. Remember, if he commands, it's like if it were me. And whatever you see or hear is to be kept strictly secret, if you value my honor, my life, my, my fortune, and your own good. Yes, sir. What did, uh, did you, did you give the, the, the goblet to Mr. Nietzsche? I did. What did he say? He will do everything as directed. Is at your service. Let us settle the conditions of our collaboration. I will put myself and my entire fortune at your disposal. So I understand, and I take your word for it. I have already begun to do for you things I would not have done for anybody else in the world. Your efforts will not go un unrewarded. I seek nothing more than your love. Let's drop the ceremonies. It's already too late. Um, Ciro and I will go put on our disguises and uh, Kalimako, you come with us so you can go and do your part 
Friar, you wait for us here. We'll be right back, and then we'll go get the Semita and, and follow our plan. That's a good idea. Let's go. Because I will wait for you here. Whoever said that bad company can lead a man to the gallows was no fool. Many times a man falls into evil ways not from being too bad, but from being too good and easygoing. Lord knows I never intended to harm anybody. I kept to my cell. I said the holy services. I looked after my parishioners. Suddenly that devil Ligudio appears before me and gets me to dip my hands so deep into mischief that now I'm in it up to my neck. And I don't yet know how far I'll have to go before I'm finished. Still, I can console myself with the thought that when a thing concerns many people, many people have to take care of it. But here comes Liguria with that servant. I'll come back. How do we look? Perfect. Now we go. We only need to get Miss Evnita. Let's head towards his house. Oh, who's that coming out of his house? Is that his servant? No, it's him. <laughs> What are you laughing at? Who could help it? Oh, he's wearing a cloak that doesn't cover his ass. What the hell does he have on his head? <laughs> oh, he looks like a cross between an owl and a monk. <laughs> and down below he has a little blade sticking out. Well, he's muttering something or other. Let's draw aside so we can hear the latest trouble with his wife. Oh, what a headache the crazy wife of mine has given me. She sent the maids to the mother, and she sent the servants out to the country. I don't blame her for that, but I don't see why she had to pull out so many coiers before getting into bed. What would I do? I just can't do it, mamma mia. If her mother hadn't told her to get her ass moving, she would have never got into that damn bed. I hope she gets the pox. I like women a bit fuzzy, but there is a limit. She snapped her heads off the bird brain bitch. But I know that before I'm done with this game, she will come around, and I will be able to say, like the lady in the story, I have seen it with my own hands. <laughs> but I am really looking good. <laughs> no one would recognize me. I feel younger, slimmer. I'm taller. There isn't a single woman in all of Firenze that would make me pay to sleep with her. But where can they be? Good evening, <coughs> sir. Oh, don't be frightened. <coughs> it's only us. Oh, it's, it's all of you. <laughs> You're lucky that I've recognized you. Otherwise, I would have run you through and through with my sword. Who is this? Oh, Ligurio. This is Ciro. And that one is a maestro. Yes, sir. Let me take a look. He really disguised himself well. Not even the secret police would recognize him. I had him put a couple of nuts in his mouth so his voice wouldn't be recognized. That was really stupid of you. Why? You should have told me so I would have put a couple nuts in my mouth, too. You know how important it is not to get ourselves recognized. Here, take this and stick it in your mouth. What is it? A ball of wax. Honey door. <laughs> Pox on you, you know you bastard! Oh, excuse me, I must uh, have given you the wrong one by mistake without meaning to. What was it? Uh, camphor. <laughs> Devil, you say. Doctor, you haven't said a word. Liguria, this made me very angry. Hey, he can really disguise his voice. Let's not wait a any more time. I'll be the commanding officer and lead the patrol in tonight's action. Uh, I'll assign the right column to Kalimako. And the left to myself. And Miss Anita, here, we'll stick between the two columns with Ciro, bringing up the rear to stiffen up should anyone go limp. The password will be saying cuckoo. Uh, who is saying cuckoo? 
the most venerated saint in all of France. Ah. Forward, march! Let's set up our ambush at this corner. Listen a moment, I hear a guitar. It is. What do we do? Uh, we ought to send a scout on ahead to reconnoitre, and then we'll make our battle plans according to his report. Who will go? Ciro! You know what you got to do. Go! Reconnoitre, and rendezvous and report, and come back. Aye, aye, sir! I wouldn't like us to catch a crab. I don't want some impotent old geezer or some cripple, so do we have to do all this all over again tomorrow night? Oh, don't worry. Ciro is an able man. Oh, there he is coming back again! Ciro, what did you find? He is the finest young scamp you ever lays eye on. <laughs> he is under 25 and uh, uh, he's, uh, he's walking all alone. Oh, he's perfect if you're telling the truth. But if you're lying, you're really being the soap. He's exactly as I told you. Let's wait until he's gotten to the corner and then we'll jump on him. Doctor, come over here. What's wrong? You're stiff as a board. Oh, here he is! I hope you take the devil to your bed. Hold still! Oh. Have that guitar! Oh. Oh. Twirl him around! Oh, yeah. Twirl him around again! One more for good measure! Oh. Now get him into the house! Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, Nietzsche. Uh? I think I'll go and take a rest now. I have a splitting headache. If you don't mind, I won't be back tomorrow morning either. Don't come back, Maestro. We'll take care of the rest ourselves. They have locked themselves <clears throat> up in the house. And I will go back home to the monastery. <laughs> and you, dear audience. Don't say that we're not observing the classical unities, because nobody's going to sleep tonight, so that the acts will not be interrupted by the passage of time. I will go and say mass. Ligurio and Ciro will go have a bite to eat, since they haven't touched a thing all day. Messer Nietzsche will go between the kitchen and the bedroom to see how things are cooking. Huh? Ligurio and Calimaco and Lucrezia will not sleep. For I know that if I were he and you were she, we wouldn't get any sleep. <laughs> oh, gentle darkness, oh, holy and sweet nocturnal hours that soothe the burning pain of love's desire, desire. you bring to lovers solely delight and so your power is the only draft that quenches passion's fire. Fire. You grant the amorous choir a well-deserved reward for daylight's darkness. Oh, blessed hours of darkness. Darkness. Requiting lovers' labors and hide their ardent kisses from the neighbors. I couldn't close my eyes all night long. I've been so eager to hear how Kalimako and the others had made out. I did everything I could to pass the time. I said my matins. I read a life of the Holy Fathers. I went to church and relit a candle that had gone out. I changed the veil on a miraculous statue of the Virgin. How many times have I told those friars to keep her well cleaned? And then they wonder why attendance is going down. I remember when there were 500 holy images. And nowadays, there are barely 20. It's all our own fault, because we haven't been smart enough to keep up our reputation. We used to hold processions every evening after Vespers. And we would have hymns sung there every Tuesday. We used to take vows there ourselves, so that the people would see fresh new plaques there all the time. And we would encourage the men and the women to make vows when they came for confession. Nowadays, nobody bothers to do any of these things. And then they wonder 
why business has fallen off. My fellow friars really don't have any brains. But I hear a great racket in Miss Anita's house. Here they come by the Blessed Virgin. They're throwing their prisoner out. Are you just in time? They really must have savored it to the last drop. Dawn is already beginning to break. I'll stand over there where I can listen without being seen. You grab him by that side. I'll grab him by this one. You, Ciro, by the end of the cake. Come on. Oh, just keep going and fast. Let's not go any further. Oh, you're right. We'll leave him right here. Twist him, Ciro. There. Another one for good measure. There we go. Now send him out. Scoundrel! Oh. If I hear one word out of you, I'll slit your gullet! He's run away. Now we better go and change our clothes. And most importantly, we have to go out early so it doesn't look as if we've been up all night. You're right. Oh, and tell Ligurio that everything went according to plan. Ligurio? Kalimaco? Uh, Kalimaco, Maestro Kalimaco! Uh, but what can we tell him? We don't know a thing. As you know, once we were in the house, Ciro and I went down to the cellar to open a bottle of wine. And you stayed up with uh, your mother-in-law to handle things. Uh, we didn't see you until just now when you called us to put him out. That's, that's true, that's true. Oh, I have fine things to tell you. Oh, the wife was in bed. Sostata was sitting by the fireplace. I took that young scamp, and just for fear that we weren't buying a pig in a poke, I threw him into a closet right next to the bedroom where there was very dim light, so he couldn't recognize my face. Very wise. I told him to undress, and when he grumbled, I turned on him like a mad dog, until he was stark naked. Stark naked. He had a really <laughs> ugly face with an enormous nose and a crooked mouth, but you've never seen such a beautiful body. <laughs> <laughs> All pink and firm and smooth. As for the other parts, don't ask. Let's not talk about it. What was the use of seeing it all? Are you kidding? <clears throat> Since I got my hands into it, I went right to the bottom of things. I had to make sure he was healthy. What if he had the pox? Where would that have left me? Just tell me that. You're absolutely right. Once I made sure he was healthy, I turned him and threw him into the bedroom. In bed, but before going out, I made sure that everything was coming along. I always like to get a lie of the land for myself. I can't get over how cunningly you've handled this whole business. Well, touch and felt everything. I went out. And I joined Sostata, who was waiting for me by the fireplace. And we spent the rest of the night talking. Whatever did you talk about all that time? About Lucrezia's silliness, and how easy it would have been if she'd given in right away, instead of beating around the bush so much. Oh, then we talked about the baby. I could feel the little rascal in my arms. Ah. And so on and so forth. Ding, 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 ding. Until the bell stroke seven. So for fear that in daylight might break in, I went back inside. Would you believe it? I couldn't get the big rogue out of bed. I believe it. He really wanted to stew in his own juice, but at last. I got him out, I called you, and we kicked him out. Well, everything seems to have gone right. Would you believe it that there is something that bothers me? What is that? That poor fellow is going to die so soon. 
sacrifice so much just for this one night. Well, there is nothing to worry about for you. Leave that to him. Well, you're right. But now I just can't wait to be the Maestro Kalima could tell him about our success. He'll be right out. But it's getting to be broad daylight. We had better go and change. What are you going to do now? Oh, I'm going home to put on my Sunday clothes. Then I'll get the wife washed. And then I will lead her to the church for the blessing of her womb. That's right. Oh, and make sure that you and Liguria come along with me, because we have to repay the friar for all the good he's done for us. We'll do that. Adieu. I heard those remarks, and considering the said Mitchell's stupidity, I like them all. Especially those last words he said. They warmed my heart. Since they're expecting to meet me at home, I'd better not stay here. I'll go and wait for them in church. My goods draw better prize there, anyway. But who is that coming out of the house? It looks like Liguio. And that must be Kalimako with him. I don't want them to see me for the reasons I have mentioned. Anyway, if they don't come and get me, I'll always have time to go and get them. As I was saying, Liguio, my friend, I felt ill at ease until about three in the morning. And even though I was having a great deal of pleasure, it didn't seem right to me. But once I had let her know who I was and made her realize the love I felt for her. How easy it could be for us to live happily ever after without any scandal, thanks to her husband's simple mindness. And once I promised to marry her, Whenever the good Lord decided to, keep, to get him out of the way. And aside all those valid reasons, once she had had a chance to really appreciate my technique and the difference between mine and Nietzsche's, between The kisses of a young lover and those of an old husband. Hmm? She sucked the beat and she said, Since your cleverness, my husband's stupidity, my mother's silliness, and my confessor's guile have led me to do what I would never have done by myself, I have to judge that this comes from a divine providence that willed it so. I am not capable of refusing what heaven itself wants me to accept. <laughs> I therefore take you as my lord, my master, my guide. You <coughs> shall act as father and protector to me, and I will be yours completely. What my husband has willed for this one night, he shall have for good and ever. You must therefore become his close friend, so you come to church with us this morning, and then return to have lunch at our house, and you will be able to come and go as you please, and we will meet at any time without arousing suspicion. Hearing those words, I was ready to die for joy. I couldn't express the smallest fraction of what I'd like to reply. And so, I find myself the most satisfying and the happiest man who has ever lived. And if this happiness endures, and I say well and alive, I will count myself more blessed than all the saints in paradise. I am overjoyed at all your good fortune. Everything has turned out just as I had predicted. Now, what will you do? Let's go toward the church, because I promised to, to be there when she arrives with her mother and, uh, and Nietzsche. I hear their door being unbolted. Oh, here come the ladies now, with Mr. Nietzsche bringing up the rear. Let's go and wait for them there. Lucrezia, I think it is best to do things like God-fearing people and not so impulsively. 
What has to be done now? Listen to how bold she is. She talks like the, the cock of the walk. Don't be surprised. She has undergone quite a change. What is it that you want now? I mean, I think it would be better if I went on ahead and spoke with the friar and told him to meet you at the portal of the church so he can lead you in for the blessing. It is fitting this morning since it is as if you've been reborn. Why don't you go ahead then? Listen to how daring she is! Last night she was half dead. I have you to thank, haven't I? Uh, go ahead and find the friar, but right there he is! Coming out of the church. I have come out here because Kalima Quendipurio told me that Mr. Nisha and the ladies were on their way to church. Here they are! Honestia, Padre! Welcome to you all. And my best wishes to you, my lady. May the Lord grant you a fine baby boy. God willing. Where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> Oh, is that Ligurio and Maestro Kalima go see in the church? Yes, sir. Who waved them to come over? Come here! God bless you all. Maestro, shake hands with my wife. The pleasure is all mine. <laughs> oh, Lucrezia, thanks to this young man, we will have a staff to lean on in our old age. I am more grateful to him than I can say. <laughs> I am sure he will be like one of the family. Lord bless you, woman. And I want you and Ligurio to come on lunch with us this morning. By all means. And I'm going to give him the key to the downstairs room of the porch so he can come right back in whenever he feels like it. Since they don't have women at home to take care of their needs. I accept, and I will make use of it whenever the occasion arises. <laughs> don't I receive something for charity? Oh, you know you will, Domine. It will be sent to you this afternoon. Isn't anybody going to remember Ciro? I'll let him ask. All I have is his. Lucrezia. How much do you think we should give to the friar to repay him for the blessing? I can't recall. Well, how much? Give him a purse full. The devil, you say? Madonna Sostrada, you look to me as if you're sprightly enough to be up to your old tricks. <laughs> Who wouldn't be tickled? <laughs> well, let us all go into the church, and there we will celebrate accordingly. After the service, you can go back home for a well-earned lunch. And you, dear audience, don't expect us to come back out again. The service is a long one. Then I'll remain in church, and they'll go via the side door and go back home. Farewell. <laughs>